Hey everyone, back at you with another video, and I want to talk about the PlayStation 5 system. The PlayStation 5 has been released almost four years now, and um, I feel like it's the best system to play PS4 games on. And I'm saying that because a lot of the games that I have on the PS5, they were released on the PS4 system. You know, I feel like the PS5 is being used for a little bit of padding in a way where um, I guess PS4 sales have kind of dwindled, right? You know, especially with a lot of indie games. So a lot of these indie games are coming out on the PS5. And these games don't really show the power the system can do because obviously these games are on PS4, some are on the Switch and you know other systems like that. So those games aren't definitely pushing the capabilities of the PS5. Now in saying that, I, I've heard from a lot of developers that sales on the PS4 are not really what they used to be. So, you know, these companies are putting their games on the PS5 and I guess the games are selling better. But it's kind of weird to think about that because the PS4 like install base is massive. You know what I mean? So you feel like if you put a game out on PS4, you know, it's going to get into homes. You know, it has like a better install base than the PS5 does. Even after four years, almost four years of the PS5 being out. Now, out of all the PlayStation systems that have come out over the years, the PS5 is the hardest version to probably talk people into buying because I feel like there's not really a strong reason to like get the system unless you're into like maybe certain exclusives, but there's not that many on the system compared to other generations. And I'll I'll, I'll tell you guys what I own that, that I guess is like tr AAA title, uh, Visions of Mana, but thing with that game it was released on the PS4. Ratchet and Clank, uh, Rift Apart. Okay, that's an exclusive. That's a really good game. Um, but you need a couple more titles to really, like, you know, to want to pick up a system. So, Final Fantasy Remake um, or Rebirth. I, I would say Rebirth because the remake was already on the PS4. That's an excellent game. It didn't sell well as Square wanted because, um, obviously, COVID is, is over with. And um, the install base on the PS4 is massive. So, um uh, a lot of people still don't have PS5s like uh, Square thought they did, so having an exclusive out is insane. Horizon Forbidden West, the one game I wanted to play on the PS5 system, but that's released on the PS4 as well. Star Ocean, The Defying Force, um, also released on the PS4. Uh, Grand Fantasy Relink, also on the PS4. Crystal Protocol, PS4. Devil May Cry uh, 5 Special Edition, yeah, that's also on the PS4 as well, so not many exclusives on the system that are not on other systems. Now, I'm sure some of you in the comments can mention uh, some more uh, exclusives on the system, maybe, that are not on the PS4. But the whole thing is, uh, games are just not ready you know, for the PS5. You know, that's why we've seen a lack of exclusives for the system, you know. Um, you know, here's another example. I saw a Smash AC video today um, on um, Until Dawn. Uh, they decided to remake that game for some weird reason. Um, and then the thing with that one, they want to charge you full price for it. They added a couple extra scenes in it and they say a couple of extra graphics, uh, like better graphics, whatever like that. But people are arguing about that because, uh, that game has some kind of missteps in it where it looks worse than the PS4 original. You're seeing too many companies just wanting to play it safe. They're looking for this cash grabs instead of like making, uh, newer games or sequel to games. You know, it's kind of sad to see. That's why it's like really hard to recommend like, oh man, you got to get a PS5, man, because you could play this game well what game oh that game was already released on this other system already they just updated the graphics a little bit that's just, that's just a terrible selling point you know the lack of ideas are just being creative in general for this generation just it, it just really it's really sad you know um remasters remakes you know uh when are you going to make a proper sequel or a newer game but a lot of these companies don't want to take chances on newer stuff because like if they don't make their numbers you know that's it for them it's a wrap Companies getting closed down, etc. Now, looking at my collection that I have right now, you could probably say that 75% of these games could have been on previous uh, platforms, which most of them are. It's just that they're not physical, which obviously I like collecting the physical. But, um, you know, when a console's life cycle, you know, I feel like it's at least, I want to say, a good six to seven years or whatever like that for a normal console life cycle. Could be different in your opinion, but that's how I look at it, at least, you know. Uh, before they start like mentioning the new newest console, we're already about at year four for the PlayStation Five, and it's really hard to find like a standout game that really like shows what the system can do. You know, something that's really impressive. 
But you can say this, though. You know, PS4 games on the PS5, they play outstanding. And I feel like this is the way these games were meant to be played in the first place. You know, I really enjoy playing a lot of these games with the faster load times, updated graphics, frame rate, things like that. You know, pretty impressive. But at the same time, disappointed with the PS5's performance when it comes to, like, exclusive titles. You know, I need that game that really makes it stand out. And I cannot promote this system in a way where, hey, you got to get a PS5. You know, everybody just wants to have the updated system, which is great, you know. Um, I usually wait a while before I get a system, but I got lucky and was able to get a PS5 about, I want to say, a year and a half after it came out. But to be honest with you, it's just like not anything on that that really makes it stand out. Like, hey, you got to get the PS5 system immediately. There's like a handful of games in that's not impressive at almost four years. And when I say a handful of games, I'm talking about a handful of exclusives. But the, even these exclusives I mentioned, they're on the PS4 as well. So it's just like, what the heck? I guess when it comes down to it, though, what I want on the system or what should have happened already is just at least some fun new IPs or even bringing back some old ones. You know, the games don't have to be triple A, even though... Uh, these systems are pretty powerful, and AAA titles would look good, you know, but uh, at least make some fun games. That's one thing I could give the Switch, is that um, all their, like, oh, AAA or first-party titles are fun. They are they are fun games. This is That's just how it is. When it comes to Sony, it seems like they abandoned a lot of their old IPs that really brought them a lot of success, or just nobody wants to touch them anymore, or maybe they just don't know what to do with them anymore. Um, Xbox has had trouble obviously with exclusives and you see the route they're going now you know they're kind of bowing out and just depending on game pass which is smart it's going to make them a lot of money it seems like this day and age um multiplayer games are the ones that are making like the triple a money pretty much or just like yeah yeah i would say triple a money because um people keep paying for stuff for those games you know to keep them active or whatever like that so whether it's new features new costumes things like that it keeps adding up now, I know what you guys are going to say, uh, one game missing off of this list, Astrobot. Now, I haven't played that yet, but looking at that game right now, that should have been one of the games that released with the system, like a launch title, or at least within a year. That would have been impressive, you know. I mean, better late than never, but still, that's the type of titles we need to really bring people into like, hey, this game, you know, is, is good for the system. This is maybe one of those games that makes the system worth buying. But four years in, it's just like, I don't know, man. I know we got Astro's Playroom, but still, you know, we need some more titles like this, you know. And whether you consider uh, Astro about a AAA title, it is definitely a fun game from what people were saying. So in closing, I just want to say that I feel like um, this generation, just as of right now, it's just not that great. You know, it's okay, but it's not as great as it could have been, you know. And now we already got companies developing their next generation systems, which is Generation X, uh, the 10th generation. And um, it feels like they just don't have a lot of ideas, probably ready for those consoles either. So, um, but anyways, hopefully we'll see some more creative ideas or just some fun games. Um, but uh, the PS5, it has a lot of padding with uh, indie titles, not enough a AAA or just creative titles. But anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I want to give a shout out to Win uh, for this topic. You know, I've been thinking about this for a while now, and um, yeah, you kind of helped me like put it into a video. So thank you for that idea. All right, guys, that's all I got for you, the radical one, and I will see you all later.